Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. So today I'm going to be talking about what the big problems were in calculus. Actually, there weren't any problems, but nobody knew that until I came along. So, and there was no need to rigorize calculus because uh, the method that Leibniz and Newton used was 100% valid and the morons who came after me simply didn't know. So let me show you why. <clears throat> now, in a very old applet, I showed you that the tangent line, okay, the tangent line slope differs from the secant line slope. This is a secant line slope and the tangent line slope. And it's basically just a small difference. So as the secant becomes shorter, remember, if you watch my previous video, this one here, how you got your drivel mainstream calculus. If you watch that, you'll see <clears throat> that as you as your secant gets shorter, <laughs> your Secant line slope looks more and more like this slope. So watch the the red and the green. See the red and the green? So it's starting to look more like it, right? Can you see that? 99403, 9908. Okay. There you go. So that's the first part. The next thing is that Newton's method was one where he just simply took this quotient here basically this rise over run, and he approximated the line, the slope of the tangent line. And really, dy dx is just a symbolic, it's just a symbolic uh, fraction of magnitudes, okay? So it doesn't matter where the dy and dx is placed along here, the ratio is the same, okay? So the new calculus, is different to the flawed mainstream formulation. I'll show you why. But before I go there, uh, there's this, this really funny part I have to tell you. So you see, in, in the mainstream academia, they were flummoxed when they, for example, used the finite difference quotient for, let's say, the function f of x is equal to x squared, and they got uh, I think they got something like this is equal to 2x plus h. Okay, So they were all terribly confused about what this h is. And so many myths grew out of it. Myths of infinitesimals, uh, of uh, who knows, whatever, evanescent quantities, all the other BS that came up. But really, there's a very simple explanation for this H. It's the difference in slopes. So if you have a curve like this and a tangent, then this H here is the difference in slope as rise over run, okay? So you, you can literally do what Newton did and just set it to zero and forget about it. Perfect, perfectly valid. Now, um, the new calculus, by the way, doesn't leave things to chance. It uses a parallel secant line. Okay, it's always parallel, therefore the value is always the correct value. That means the slope of this secant line will be the same as this tangent line. Why? Because look, they're parallel. You see those three arrows there, you morons? <laughs> they're parallel. Okay, and you say, how can they be parallel? Well, very easily. Uh, there's a geometric proposition which says that you can draw through any line, this line, through any, li through any point, let's take this green point, a line that is parallel to this line. And you can do it anywhere along here. Very easy, isn't it? But of course, the imbeciles of the last 400 years were very, very ignorant and incorrigibly stupid and never understood the elements of Euclid's or even what Euclid was trying to do. <coughs> so now, the Holy Grail tells you, explains this whole thing to you very easily. Okay, so if you doesn't matter how you do this thing now. You can, uh, let's just get this out of the way. You can move this as you like. And this identity always holds. And by the way, from this identity, you also get, you also get the definite integral. How, you ask? Let me show you quickly. I'm such a nice guy that I'll show you. So if you have this, 
which is from my historic identity. It's got nothing to do with Marcus Glider's bullshit, you know, the Wikipedia stuff where you have that fundamental excrement lemma. Nah, nothing to do with that. Yeah. So download the applet. Don't believe me, by the way. Download the applet. Okay. So this is the this is the identity. Let's just move that along. This is the identity. Slope, let me explain it. Slope of the non-parallel secant line, this guy here is equal to the slope of the tangent line, this guy here, plus a difference, this difference. Okay, that's all it is. Now you can get the definite integral from this very easy. Watch. Watch, watch carefully. There's no magic. You see that? It takes genius to realize things like this. How did I realize this? Well, obviously, I was just messing around trying to see if your bullshit mainstream calculus could be salvaged using a similar approach to my new calculus. Well, of course, in my new calculus, this is written very rigorously. Okay, so uh, in the new calculus, it's this. Oh, and by the way, that is not the central derivative, <laughs> the central difference, as that incorrigibly stupid moron Jack Hazinger told you, told you on side of math. In other words, this little pudgy, smiley little man here, that's what he told you. That's what he thought. Well, obviously he was wrong, and you were wrong too if you thought that. So this is how you get the definite integral, okay? Can you see that? The definite integral is equal to this. So you would write here is equal to f prime of x dx from x to x plus h. Ingenious, isn't it? Okay, so they gave you a whole pile of trash called limit theory, okay? An enormous pile of crap called limit theory. When all they could have said is, you know what, guys? You can just simply discard the terms in h because they're the expression that explains this the slope difference. Watch what happens to the slope difference. You see this line here? This angle here is a slope difference. Let's see if we can get that out of the way. Okay, so the slope difference is the 33.427, okay? That's the slope difference. So as this point approaches this point, you see it gets closer to zero because the slope difference between this line and this line this line and this line is becoming zero okay so it gets closer and closer until it's not defined at the point of tangency because this bullshit method was something that newton and leibniz were working on and they couldn't explain and that's why you got the crap theory of limits so i have a few articles to recommend but i'll recommend them shortly if you're not already a subscriber become a subscriber click like tell your friends about this okay follow me also on academia.edu and if you become a, 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 not only a, a subscriber to my channel but a member for 4.99 a month you get access to a lot more information now <clears throat> the book you can buy to explain the new calculus is this book here okay and also, this book, although I'm selling it, I'm also giving you a free copy. And the link is in the details section where you can download it free from academia.edu. So let's summarize. Where, what happened in reality? Well, these two were the mothers of calculus, Newton and Gottfried Leibniz. Gottfried Leibniz. Isaac Newton, Gottfried Leibniz. They were offspring, this cute little Gilbert Strang with his missing teeth. And then... Jack Hazinger, cute little pudgy pig, Jack Hazinger. And then, of course, supermodel Anders K. Sorg. And I think this is Marcus Cliver here, but I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, I'd, I'd have to, he didn't verify his name, but I'm sure this is Marcus Cliver. Will this be you over here? Well, you really don't want your mugshot appearing in the square. You really don't. So to avoid that, what you need to do is study the links I'm about to give you in this little notepad. I will paste these all in the, they're all free. You can download them all from academia. And now remember, when you go to academia, you need to log on first. Otherwise, you won't be able to read these articles. It's free to log in and to create an account. 
that's pretty much it. My name is John Gabriel. This is New Calculus Channel. Until next time, bye-bye.